you take a moment to get that. Okay. Um, I just want to thank all the land use administrators that have been helping us and the county commissioners from the past meeting for their willingness to listen to our constituents and craft solutions together. We want to also thank all the planning commissioners because we know you're all volunteers and it takes a lot of time and energy to be creative to create solutions for a healthy community. And we understand that adding comments into tonight's work session is a new format. And so we commend you on adapting to the present needs of our community. So we are all here today because of proposed changes to the Swatch County Land Development Codes. Two public meetings were hosted in Crestone to listen to people's concerns and hear their stories regarding housing, sanitation, and accessory dwellings. This led to many of us presenting to the county commissioners hearing in December, in which they sent back the proposed changes to the planning commission. In the meantime, we've hosted two solution sessions at Moffitt Town Hall to develop a strategy on how we can provide better education and communication to Sawatch County residents and work together with the county to create solutions that work for all people, regardless of their economic and housing situations. In addition, the Northern Sawatch County Library District has hosted two recording sessions to help people tell their housing stories to demonstrate the unique and alternative living environment that brings people to our county to live and build. It's inspiring that we have so many people in this room tonight to offer solutions and new systems to address the county's concerns re regarding blight, sanitation, and crime. With no universal building codes, we have some of the most diverse and innovative building practices in the country. No square footage requirements allow people to live simpler with a smaller carbon footprint and to be mindful of our resources in building water consumption and heating cooling costs. How can anyone make the decision for another person about what is enough space for them, them to live a happy and healthy life? We understand the challenges of approving and enforcing appropriate sanitation methods, and that is a major concern in our county. Emergent technologies such as composting toilets, humanure, and incinerating toilets can address many of our water consumption and conservation use issues, especially in a drought-ridden county. However, it will take education and outreach to help the people understand the importance and urgency of protecting our groundwaters, wildlife, and each other if alternative systems remain in place. Instead of restricting practices that are less resource intensive, let's work together to create models that support more regenerative living. Often it is a concern for property values and negative stereotypes of working class and lower income people that are at the core of land use changes like these that are being proposed. Areas that fail to retain affordable and diverse housing options and put barriers in place become gentrified. This displaces workers, impacts the ability to fill jobs and ultimately affects our entire economy. We are seeing this happen in many small communities throughout Colorado. Let's create outreach systems that empower and encourage people to live and build that contribute. <laughs> So we basically want to work together with you. Suzanne Rude. And thank you to everyone for being here and for allowing us here. And I want to thank everybody that's here. For sitting on this committee and being here this evening, and thank everybody else for showing up and expressing a vested interest in these problems. I showed up this evening because I have waited almost 30 years to build my retirement home here. I was drawn by the potential to build a new way of being that reflects sustainable, earth preserving practices. The Energy Fair was the best place to go in 1993 to learn more about the emerging technologies and sustainable building materials. I moved into an abandoned cannabis grow house and have spent the past few years renovating it. I am so content in my 450 square foot tiny house. To double that size when building materials are skyrocketing could put my dream of being mortgage-free out of reach. It also makes it challenging to heat and to clean as I age. Fortunately, my barn raising building costs are lower. I am intending on building a self-sustaining earthship, incorporating hempcrete, recycling waste in a beautiful and useful way, being off-grid and recycling water to grow food are some of the benefits of the Earthship model. 
I am also an, an advocate for conservation of water and regenerative agriculture. I am interested in composting toilets and the land I am looking at may not be hospitable for sinking a septic tank. I've been told the waiting list for a septic tank or well is about three years. I will have to do something in the meantime. I am selling my house in Fort Collins this spring and planning to move into an RV while I am building my earthship. I am also planning to put a garage up first in order to store materials and provide a workspace. The proposed changes would have a negative impact on my plans. Let's let tonight be the baseline for discussions and a means of creating community involvement. I'm willing and ready to lend my gifts, time and talent to find solutions. Three minutes. <laughs> <We're all seconds. laughs> and many people that I know have lived in square footage under 500 square feet and lived comfortably and simply. Uh, I, and also to build houses out here, it really helps to build something beforehand. And even if you're a, a landowner and you want to build something before you have a residence, or if you don't even have, want to have a residence, then the proposed changes would just totally limit that. Uh, I think the biggest problem is the sanitation and septic. I feel that uh, it's a huge issue and working to make that inexpensive for people is very difficult, <laughs> I realized. To, to make it inexpensive and then also effective is really the goal, but uh, solutions are, are tough there. Uh, so I, I, part of that, I fear that the county will take uh, the state's perspective on that and just go with the NSF certified composting toilets, which in some, which may work in some cases, but many of those, uh, if you read reviews of the really cheap ones, which are one to $5,000, they may be approved by the NSF, but they are actually really ineffective compared to much simpler systems that people can uh, just build by themselves. Or you can go with a really complex system uh, like uh, a Clivus Moltrum, and those are even more expensive than a septic tank. So trying to, to work with a composting toilet and move that forward, but also consider that making that inexpensive and uh, working with people that have experience with it and not just going with uh, what the experts say, because in many cases, septic tanks can fail too because uh, of owner maintenance on those things. You know, there's no, people need every five to 15 years to empty those septic tanks. And if people aren't doing that, then that causes more public. Uh, Lockhart. Uh, if possible, I would like to defer to the end of the list and let other people talk. Okay. That'd be all right. I 
got out of home building because of the regulatory environment. And I think most Americans that have their own business nowadays will tell you that uh, regulatory compliance is driving them nuts. But having the inspectors come on my job site and literally drive a crew crazy, trying to uh, conform to regulation after regulation after regulation. But here's where I, where I stand on this. If people can't afford 600 square feet, and can barely get that project done. If we, we raise it to 900 square feet, it's going to take them longer to get that done. According to the according to the American the Association of American Home Builders, for every thousand dollar increase in price, it forces 200,000 Americans out of the market this year. Now, with 120 dollars uh, plywood prices of, of recent, and why not? Are we just going to force more people into cardboard boxes down in the town square like that we have in the city? So are we going to, the beauty of Sawatch County has always been its affordability. And I think we should really uh, stay away from uh, regulating square foot size. It's, 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 it took me 10 years to build my house, beautiful home, but I had to live in my accessory dwelling first before I could get my house done. If, you have, if you're an off-gridder and you have sensitive electronic equipment like uh, solar solar stuff is, where are you going to put it? Out in the wind and the rain? you got to build a shed first. got to you got to do that. That's just a stupid people. Now, when it comes to uh, these composting toilets or whatnot, there are, there are, this, is a, this is an emerging technology with groundwater problems across the nation. There's a lot of effort coming out with these new kind of whole house systems, completely dry, compostable, processable, uh, of all your waste into a compost. Don't slam the door on that. It, it, I just think it's another really dumb idea. All three of these are really dumb ideas. Hello, Jones. Yeah. Thank you all know kind of my opinion on me that sit up there and sign the table for a little while. I look at this again as a people's right to you. The more government intrusion we have in our damn lives, the less we're going to enjoy. And, and this right here is typical government intrusion. You guys have the power to stop that. And, and you know, just, just to uh, the population of Sawatch County, you may know what the population is. 6,800. 6,700 people. And we're one of the biggest counties in the state. I'm not, not, not for sure, but I think we're bigger than the state of Rhode Island. We have plenty of room to roam out here. And this, this is just a government intrusion on our private property rights. materials, build my home, and rent a house. So if this goes through, I'm now going to be living in a car that I just, that just broke down, so I can't even move it. That's one point. Two points is, is that in this county and the crime level in this county, there is no way that I'm going to pinch pennies, buy materials, and leave them out in the open on my property when we have no law enforcement being out. One of my other things is, is that <clears throat> I do not believe in a septic tank. Where I am and the type of soil that I have, in a number of years, I will have to have a pump repaired, et cetera. But you know what? With composting toilet, I can put indigenous trees on my property to help keep the wind down from blowing me away. 
I can make sure that I return that compost back to the land and see the natural land come back. I guess what I'm saying is, is that your decision is going to put a lot of us out of a place to live or a hope of our dream. I'm 77 years old. I'm too old to start over again. Please don't take my dream. My name is Faith Olson, I'm the president of JDHOA, and I was appointed on the board a year ago, and as president, I was appointed in June. I haven't been there long, believe me, a lot of stuff <laughs> to deal with. Uh, the KV consists of 779 lots, 515 members. Many of the members, landowners, have, live all around the country, some around the world, and Swatch County owns some, and the KV owns some, and that's included in the 550 lots. Minimum square footage in the state of Colorado is 150 square feet. It is my personal opinion that the square foot footage of a person's home is a personal choice, and raising the square foot footage requirement to 900 will deny home ownership to many people. An engineer designed septic system costs $20,000 plus. A vault costs $1,750 plus tax and installation. Big difference. More research needs to be conducted on the use of incinerated toilets and uh, composting to toilets here in Swatch County. We have so many people living in Swatch County without proper sanitation. The county is growing and will have a huge influx of people in the coming years. How would you like to drink, bathe, water plants, animals from a well that is constantly having septic waste leach into the ground near it? 
The need for housing is a huge problem all over the country. Look at looking at alternative housing, lowering the square footage and alternative sanitation is a must. We live in a in the greatest country on earth. It's important to help support the those that are trying to buy, develop, and live on their property. Communication is the first step. And one thing I gotta say about the expense of buying a lot, putting in the water, the power, or whatever you know uh, you want to do on your property. But I gotta say one thing is how does a person these people I know that work for the county to make a very low wage, they will never be able to own a home in this county if we change all this stuff and they can barely buy a place to live now because I deal with them in the KV all the time and other people. Thank you. Hi. And from what I've been told, your primary concerns and reasons for changing the codes are the blight and trash on people's properties and inadequate waste management. The proposed changes are not going to solve these problems, even going forward once they're passed. It's only going to make it more economically challenging and make water alternative water management more difficult. I would love to see solutions to the blight and waste management issues as well. I would love to create solutions to clean up what already exists rather than to regulate people going forward. It's not gonna solve the problems. I suspect that in the process of solving our waste management issues um, for the residents who are currently out of compliance, we will discover and develop creative and environmentally rewarding methods to composting and incinerating toilets and better ways to deal with our waste if we give it an opportunity rather than shredding it out of the code. Um, I, you know, and I'd rather see improvements to our environment rather than adding more plastic to the ground by aseptic tanks and leach fields. I will continue to pursue environmentally conscious solutions and odor, owner builder focused land use codes. We're facing an uncertain climate future. Where is our water for this winter? There isn't any. And to think that we can just keep flushing our crap down it and not thinking about where it's going and what's happening is not gonna be helpful. We have to begin to think differently about how we live and how we build and how we manage our water and our waste and how we help our neighbors rather than just citing them because they're out of compliance rather than helping them get into compliance. Not all of our old ways, septic systems and hiring a builder to build our homes are gonna serve us going forward. Please give us more time to present better solutions. Help us with these solutions if you're so inspired. My vision is that we can all live in this very special area in a way that regenerates the land and causes us all to flourish, even with people living in small houses off grid. Thank you. Yes, that's right. Okay. All right. My name is Brett. Um, a small house, 700 square feet, costs about 75,000. Typical market values or rates for homes right now is 200 to 350 square foot, which equals 180 to 315,000 square foot to build. A lot of us are owner builders and with materials skyrocketing up, we're looking for alternative means for building homes, including sanitation systems, garages for tool material storage and dwellings while we build. I moved to this county a year and a half ago to build my house. I don't need a 900 square foot house. I don't want a huge mortgage. That's why I came here. I want to build my own hands, take my own time, do a good job, but I want the codes to 
I want to help create the codes and modify the codes so that we can do this in affordable means. And I'm not alone with this one. Thank you. Green. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I have two, two, uh, two suggestions. First, I would like to consider that one way that you can address the cost of student proficiency is have um, a situation where all the different designs that are out there could be presented to the land use, and then we could also consider how location and soil is impacting some of those issues for, uh, for composting toilets, incinerating toilets, et cetera, et cetera. And then in getting your application process, because one of the big issues for this toilet situation is that um, people aren't doing it right, right? Like, so that's kind of part of the problem that you're trying to hit by saying don't have them. So would it be possible then instead to consider having an education model whereby someone says, I wanna put that toilet in, but then they must take some specific courses to know that they're doing it the correct way and that they have a certification sign off and you go, okay, I, we know they are gonna do it right um, as a way to address uh, sort of misuse, right? Because part of, it's, part of it's a cash flow issue, but also part of it is that people, um, you know, their complex systems sometimes aren't necessarily doing it in the way that they should. So education could be the way to permit the permitting to go forward. The next thing I wanted to bring up and request was that as we're pondering these codes and uh, making sustainable solution oriented adjustments that we think about the codes in total, what they're really designed for. So one, that the codes really express our values as a community, no matter what our economic status is, that we think about these codes not as a divider because of economics, but instead as a unifier to the people who want to live in this area. Number two, that we maintain the history of unique housing in scope and size that's always been a feature of the San Luis Valley. So if we consider that cabins were very small, people built those themselves, that that is part of our legacy and you know, holding on to that seems important. Three, that we consider providing assistance when residents are out of compliance and that the way we ponder getting that assistance is instead of having this concept of exclusively code enforcement, which we don't have an inspector because of money, we instead maybe have underneath the land use uh, committee, um, a panel of three people who are addressing when someone's out of compliance. Why are they out of compliance? Is this a money issue? Is this a, you know, is this a time issue? Is this a hardship issue, like you know, a death of someone in their you know, in their family, and that's why they're not moving forward. So that instead of just citing someone, which is the model for um, for having an inspector and the money for the inspector, that we instead sort of have a more human approach to go, what what's the real issue? Why why have they been stymied? Why have they fallen off track? Right? Why why are their systems not working? Uh, number four, that the codes. Oh, thanks. No, that's okay. Actually, I'd like to defer my time to the road and so forth. Oh, okay. Uh, so then, so then, Wade. Um, so then, number four would be that the codes really promote emerging technologies, right? So that instead of um, things that we don't know about, we go back to what we do with the um, with the toilet situation, and we say, okay. We've got all these people who want to do this, whatever this is. I, we don't even know all the things. Let's say gray water. Then again, you walk through an educational process to then have the county say, yes, you are ready to be able to put that in. So that when new technology comes, the code is actually prepared to address that there's something we don't even know what it is yet, right? But we have a model about how we can implement it so that it doesn't just kind of run wild. Uh, then number five is basically in short that we're maintaining personal liberty. I think that we can say across, you know, that the code's mode is that, you know, what, what don't tread on me. I mean, like whatever one's little view is that ultimately the code is designed to make it so that 
people can build houses that they want, right? And do it with their own uh, hard work within their means and that they're also not stepping on anyone else. So when, when I looked at the codes, part of the task that I saw was that the commission was trying to address again, this notion of blight, that it was becoming problematic, right? Because then it's now it's, it's starting to affect other people. So can we look at the codes as a way to maintain liberty, but then kind of bring it back so that everyone is getting to do the thing that they wanted? Because um, I would say that we're in a county that's filled with independent thinkers across all, all forms, right? So hence the reason we're all sort of sitting here. So to me, the big thing I really wanna make sure that you're kind of pondering as we do this next round of codes is that an education model that we have designed and we can present stuff to you. It doesn't have to be you going and finding it. All these people know stuff. We could be bringing that forward and then you know setting that up and that you sort of certify that you took these educational pieces to then use whatever technology it is so that you know that when you gave that permit, it's not gonna go run them up. So that's it. One thing that I have heard is true. But my information is that one of the concerns uh, that people have uh, the reason they want to put these uh, new codes in place is, is uh, to maintain property values. That's what I've heard. That that uh, that all this blight and, and small houses and all that kind of stuff somehow lowers the property values. I kind of see it the other way around. I kind of see that my property values would be reduced uh, if I had these restrictions imposed on me. I've been uh, in this county. I've had I've been resident in this county for 40 years. I started building my house 30 years ago with natural stone and other materials. I couldn't do it. I couldn't have done it um, if I had a whole bunch of regulations that I had to deal with. I didn't have the money or the or, or the time or, or, or the knowledge. And so I did it myself the way that I figured out as best I could. And uh, I'm very grateful to have that opportunity. And I would hate to see that other people wouldn't have that same opportunity. So thank you. Question of small house living and human beings having a smaller footprint on the earth for years now. And the quality of some of these is just outstanding. And you all know that there are houses that are many, many, many hundreds of square feet that are red chapel mess. So size is not the measure of quality. I would hope that for land use, that would be your focus, is quality of housing, not size. Thank you. Uh, so, thank you everyone. Well, that was great. Um, I just have to say, personally, I don't think anything should go into the ground. No chemicals, no uh, what you would consider from people as waste. And new technology, modern technology, has a lot of things that can help um, break down everything that we produce. But at the same time, everything is created with a purpose. Like, Every animal, every every life cycle, something is birthed to then kill this and then to take care of that. And what we excrete can also take care of itself. But we can come up with compost bins that, well, will be locked so bears can't get in it, um, and also can be um, closed off at the bottom so nothing does leak. So I think that's the only additional thing that I'd have to say. With everything else that I've heard. <laughs> Okay, try to say it really fast. 
<laughs> um, I cut part of it off. Uh, people not only value self-reliance, but a system of housing and living that benefits everyone and allows everyone the ability to become more self-reliant and autonomous. No one wants to be homeless and no one wants anyone else to be homeless. Finding and evicting or displacing anyone from their homes is viewed as a violent act that shouldn't be wished or forced upon anyone. We had a community action group or committee devoted to aiding citizens without housing, building, or code issues and educating each other. There would be no need for punishing people. The next big, big issue that was presented in these talks was our environment. The negative impact on our earth, air, and especially water are extremely important to many of us. Not only should we allow smaller square footage for less energy reliance and less material usage, composting toilets slow down the dependence on precious drinking water to flush our waste, and slow down the pollution of our groundwater and streams and other energy saving practices, we should be encouraging them. The same group I mentioned earlier would be offering education services and even possibly financial incentives to build with the future in mind, instead of fearing alternative or more modern practices because they are different than what they have seen going up for years. I propose we create codes that promote safety and ensure there will be support for anyone and everyone concerning shelter and living space. If we must create a minimum square footage, let it align with the state's 150 square foot for one individual and 100 square foot per additional person on the residence. If we must have a code for what you refer to as waste and what I and many others refer to as humanure, let it promote, promote safe ways to use human byproducts by integrating them into the human nutrient cycle and allowing natural thermophilic organisms that are present in the abundance here on earth to do the job they love to do, compost our poop. This is natural and can be done safely and without the burden of having to decide what punishment we are going to create for those who can't afford to use fresh water to send their waste down the line. We must have a code about accessory structures. Please consider how said codes would affect the entire county and everyone in it. This code isn't for one single neighborhood with one type of person and one type of lifestyle. Enforcement of these building codes would, could and does lead to homelessness, more abandoned structures built and partially built, increased mental illness associated with the punishment and stigma of being displaced or fined. And displaced is just a nice word that describes one of the most traumatizing and degrading experiences a human can endure. It also leads to problems with physical health and disease, which I believe are some of the reasons cited for creating such codes to begin with. We have many options that include smaller minimum square footage, homes, education, community building projects like tiny home communities and eco villages. Let's be on the cutting edge of building for our sakes and for the sakes of our children and generations to come. Touch on the ability of microbes, and I think it's going to be something that's so enemy overlooked. There's so many different benefits on how about the microbes. The mycel mother is super specifically killer. One example is mealworms can actually digest all types of plastic. If they can digest all types of plastic, how is it possible? How is it not possible to do a composting system well with those same microbes or with similar microbes? There's just so much we don't know. And to outlaw something just simply based on uh, not knowing whether or not it's going to be effective is, uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of ignorance. That's, I guess, the best way I could put it. Um, we live in a 364 square foot tiny home, tiny home, massive for us. Um, it works phenomenally well. All of our needs are met. We're extremely happy. Uh, we actually started a cafe slash bakery in town. There's no possible way we could have done that without living in our camper first and without paying our dues in our camper. And uh, I feel like that's almost like a rite of passage of being down here is actually like, you know, weathering the storm and uh, not being forced to get something up super quick where you're actually um, losing all your money. Like a lot of our money went actually simply to access our property because we were landlocked. So, I mean, there's various different things that go into it that uh, impede your ability to even move on to your lane, and this would further that. And uh, I don't think that's the most sustainable route, and I think 
you're going to be pushing a lot of people that are ecocentric out of this area, which is the exact opposite of what we want. Um, we want people that are very ecocentric living here. We want to replenish the watershed. Speaking more on the microbes, if you have microbial life versus dead soil on the top, you're actually replenishing the watershed versus taking away from it. How much would a septic tank, dest septic tank destroy the soil microbes on the top of the soil and underneath? And not to mention the water that goes into building the septic. You're extracting all that water when you could actually just be composting and building the watershed itself through Google cultures, also various different practices. Furthermore, the biogas digester bags are something to definitely be educating about. Um, they're very sustainable, very safe. They're all sealed up, nothing leaches. You can actually run dirt bikes. You can run cars. You can run all your home appliances on these things. You can heat your home. You can cook. Um, all of it's super sustainable. It's using our own excrement and just food waste. Um, there's ways to do these sustainable, these things sustainable. And uh, please don't outlaw them just because we don't know those those sustainable ways to do it yet. Um, one comparison I can make is Paul Wheaton doing the rocket mass heater. The rocket mass heater was um, very uh, frowned upon. It's actually still outlawed in most cases. Now it's completely legal because he proved it was safe. Thank you. Uh, Live north of the Cambrian states, so I can understand the concern over the way that some countries maybe regulations have nothing to do to correct that. They actually will harm the poor of the county. The majority of this county actually falls, it's a poorer, poorer county than most in Colorado. Um, we left a 1,800 square foot house. So it's just my wife and I. We live in a 320 square foot temporary home now. And our intent is to build a 500 square foot cabin to live very simple. I want to spend most of the time outdoors. When we came, we were thinking of using a composting toilet because of the cost. You can spend a thousand dollars and have one that's good and that's reliable, that's efficient, that won't contaminate the ground. We ended up getting septic, but our first estimate was $17,000. We ended up spending $10,000. Who can spend that? Um, and the other thing is, to build, how long does it take to build? If you come out, you have just land and you want to build a homestead. You have all these, this process you have to go through. You need septic, you need permits for all these other things. You need obviously a well and water. Um, so how long should you have to reside in a temporary housing? We left everything. We started over. Um, we came here with nothing but our vehicle and the funds, whatever funds we had. Um, so we're new here, so my vo our voice isn't as great as those here. There's many people in the county that have no idea this is even taking place. As I was leaving my property, a guy that's been here for 40 years that lives simple isn't even aware that this is taking place. <clears throat> the, most people in the county aren't aware of the potential damage this can cause them. Um, most people can't afford, afford it. So, but anyways, uh, that's just our story. But you, you have a room full of people that have been here. And these regulations aren't gonna benefit. Um, limiting how or reach, forcing us to have a 900 square foot or larger house does nothing. How would, how would others like it if we told them they couldn't have this size of a house? Um, it infringes on our right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. People should have the choice of what type of house they want to live in. As long as it's not harming the environment, or as long as septics or the waste systems aren't going into the ground, as long as we have things that protect that, and they're not harming their neighbors. We shouldn't be infringing upon the rights of the people. We live in America, it's not China. It's starting to get there, but this is the United States of America. We stand for a free nation. Let's not change that. 
Kevin? Yeah. Your last name? Prior. No, this isn't about waste systems. Uh, so I can't thank the end, but I wanted to just kind of bring it on the power topic. Renewable energy, green planet, reducing the carbon footprint. Um, a scary statistic is 3% of America uses solar power. The scarier part is our country is at 8% capacity of what's left. So with the growing population, with all the stuff that we're talking about right now, I think that should be taken into consideration. Um, on, the, on the topic of what Frank was saying is the funding, is what funding can citizens access? That's, I've talked to senators and congresspeople, county commissioners here in the Valley, and they've told me there's $258 billion. Well. Frank actually bought a solar system for me, but he didn't get any assistance. So I think when we're talking about a better planet, a greener planet, cleaner, and we're also helping homeowners and property owners save money, I think that should be taken into consideration because there's water treatment, uh, sewage treatment, plants that use solar, solar power that uh, could help reduce the, the cost. Um, and the San Luis Valley is the best place on the planet, in my opinion, for solar power. So that's it. Um, did anyone else want to speak that did not sign?
Stone and Sawatch is starting a podcast called Watch County Stories, and every month we're recording people out the door. So all you have to do is call the library and you can sign up to come and have your audio story recorded. I already have some papers. Um, four or five were here. So um, it's a good spot to share your personal story so that we um, can capture that for history. And then the work session, it's not exclusively happening here. It's going to happen. Yeah, all you have to do is call the library, ask if you can be a part of the podcast and share your story and just sign me up, give you all the details. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. All right. Do we have any comments from board members? Well, I think this will be four. I think, you know, everybody that's that's here that is concerned about the rules and regulations that are being put in place or may be put in place. But there is always a variant to this. So if and I'm just throwing this out, I'm not saying it's happening. But let's say we stuck with the 900 square foot. You can always come in and ask for a variance down to the 250 square foot or whatever you feel appropriate. But we have to put in the regulations certain things that are required by the state. All right. But then the Board of County Commissioners can make exceptions to those rules through their uh, authority. So just because we may say that composting products are not allowable, because they are under the state rules that you can have composting products, you can come in and ask for variance. So just because some of the rules we may not change on it doesn't mean that it's, it's in stone. It's, you can ask for variance, and that's what you need to do. Uh, and then these rules are rewritten. Well, I don't know how often. We, we do about every three, four, four or five years. years. Yeah. We rewrite them. Yeah. And we do have a master plan that was worked up several years ago, and we redid some of it. So watch County Master Plan. Some of you might want to look at it. And it may have been done before. It's about four years ago we did it. I think we redid it about four years ago. And it was a real complicated deal. It took three years to do it the first one. And this was the plans of meetings that was held all over the county. The clear over the sergeants, the block of the stone, the Villa Grove, Center, Margarita. It was held all over the county. And that was what the people what is the county to look like? And one of them was regulations. Because Swatch County 20 years ago was a county with no regulations, and that's why we have a lot of some of the issues that we have up in the north end of the county is because people moved in with no regulations because of no regulations. And so that's what you know we brought some of this information on. Just thought I'd give you that as a history because. Myself and Jeff, we've been involved since the early 80s. <laughs> uh, so we're like the historians of what's going on. Don't you, don't you think, Jeff, that we've seen the changes come about? Is that a code book? No, it's, this is just, this is what the plan that people uh, throughout the county wanted to see. Like, they didn't want to see lights, you know, on the sign. It's more of a guide than it is. A guide of, of what uh, they wanted the county to look like or to be. And is that available online? Is there a way to access that? Yeah, it's on the county website. Okay, good. I, I can't find it. Do you know where? It's linked up to the land use. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Okay. Anyone else from the board got a comment? Amber, where do you want to start? Yeah. 
Oh, you, that's right. You got an email from one of our board members is not here and he sent in an email with comments. Would you read that? Steve. Well, I have a question in regards to whenever we say uh, the square footage net, are we talking about, because uh, we have the tiny homes and stuff, some of these are sitting on wheels, you know, and so are we talking about a structure that is actually attached to the ground, or are we talking you know, I think that's what we need to define as to what we're saying the 600 or the 900 square foot is. Is that a, a structure that's attached to the ground? Built on the concrete or, pad or built on the pad, and pad and so has the sewer, water, and all that. But, so if it was 250 square feet, they'd still have to have the water and the sewer and be on the ground and not on wheels, because that's a mobile home. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm asking the question. But a camper, and so that tiny home on wheels is still a camper. It's not that. So once you, you, know, once you take, take the wheel, wheel once you take the wheel back to the for the bedroom and foundation, that would be considered a house. That would be encouraged. So, so when we're talking about uh, the square footage, we're talking about. Uh, something that's attached to the ground with, with plumbing and sewer. Right. And if it's not, then it's, then we consider that an RP, an RP or a mobile home. And there, they fall under the different rules. I mean, is that? A residence. And a residence is not a mobile home. It's that's a structure permanently. Yeah. yeah, I just want to make sure that we were all on the same page as far as what the structure we're talking about. Well, no, you don't necessarily have to have those. Well, they fall under the mobile home falls under different rule. Yeah. And there's no square footage on mobile home. Mobile home can also be put on a permanent foundation and then the title Well, I mean, it can be. Yes. When I think of residence, I think of it as someone who's someone living with structure that has separate residence or house. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, I mean, if you guys want to change the wording of this idea to add or take away, um, you guys can choose the right. Thank you, Bob. address the score. I think the first thing you know that we also need to make them aware of the people aware of them. Do we put it in there? Like, you know, they want to do a 250 square foot, 
the first thing you have to do is put the septic system in. Well, then that brings up the next issue on the composting. So, which which do we put in which order? Because the rules now call for septic. The septic, the very first thing you have to put in is the septic. And that's the same. I don't know because, uh, like I say, I'm not that familiar with composting toilets. <coughs> Is a composting toilet based on square footage too, or that people use? I mean, number. No, no, those are items that uh, I think we have several people in the audience that were very knowledgeable in the composting. And I think by myself on the board, I'm not knowledgeable in the compost. So I, I would have to defer to either have somebody come and lecture us on what the different types of composting are. And so that's the kind of at a loss right now in the composting or I don't compost. Well, they both tie together. So much that you change one, you're going to have to change them both. So, So, uh, but does the uh, uh, inspector have to come out and inspect the composting one also? See that it's in the ground properly, and whatever they do. And then uh, and the composting does perhaps the gray one. Well, So you'll have to have a plan for a gray water system, the composting toilet. So we need to add that into the regulations. We're going to have to have the gray water. Gray water is going to have to be listed there somehow how to deal with this. One or another. And the state code. So that's what we need to do is attach that part of the composting and to make sure that it's attached with the state rules and regulations. Composting toilet and the gray water. Those are expected by somebody else. Is that is that one that Mr. Pump way to do? So is this I mean, is Mr. So what I'm talking about, I got my garden and that compost in my garden. This ain't the same type of mm -hmm. I drive put my veggies and stuff in my hot mm -hmm. out there. So, mm -hmm. Doing it right. systems that are the exact same, and there are also the nuanced new age systems that are far more Okay. Uh, I think that's one of them. Yeah, myself, I need more knowledge on composting here. Um, you can use liquid enzymes that offset that. Doesn't it matter how cold it is. It has a self heat. Okay. Okay. And have you used enzymes? Yes, ma'am. Okay. 
that's what my guess is. I had stated that we weren't going to accept more comments from the office. I think we've got to back up here and get some more information as far as the composting, the gray water, and so forth. And there's people out here that have the expertise and experience to contribute to our expertise. Well, maybe I want to direct one of our either workshops or that before we forward that part to the county commission. Because we can always forward in parts to the county commission. That's the county commission to hold off on the composting for that until we have more information. Put that part in the weather week because we have hearings. It gets a little hairy for our office, but yeah. Well, that's the, that's the contentious one. I would like, and I see, I don't see the you know, building access. Nobody talked about the accessory buildings. I think one person said something about very little, very, very little said about that. So that's kind of the no brainer. But well, and I thought we had discussed that to make that change that there would be one building allowed for a tool shed. Do you have something on that, Amber? So what the other thing was doing was extension structures are not permitted on all the basic parcels unless an agricultural permit or a residential permit or a quiet for example for a historic church should be scared out of the building signs to show. Um, or parkers, a greenhouse, and or greenhouse shall not be applied for or permitted on parcel of land without such needed residence. Um, a permitted, a permitted uh, residence is completed. Um, and then the pretty much you just have to have the construction permit um, for a residence submitted and applied for. Um, what you're saying is if they submitted for a residence permit, then they're able to put a structure on for a tool shed as long as they buy a building permit for it too. Because yeah. there is a spot they could do that all on the same application. Yeah. 
and we do not have building inspectors. So. Amen. <laughs> All right. So, did we do, so we did address the uh, uh, accessory buildings. Did we mark that one for this as being. And it's it's going to be a thing of wording there, changing the wording on that. So, we'll have that for, for our next Thursday night. We all agree on that same thing. I mean, basically, so. Uh, having, if they, somebody comes in and applies for a permit for a residence, at the same time, they also yeah. can apply for their building permit for the one storage shed and go ahead and put it there. As long as it, the permit is bought and paid for. So there's not a one before the other. Right, they'd both be at the same time. But the, the residence permit would still be first, right? So, and then the, you know, along the lines, there was store appliances. Uh, well, that's what the, that's what the addition on the building permit is, Jeff. That's the building permit before they can put you have a building permit for your house, and then you, at the same time you do the building permit for the house, you do the building permit for your shed. And you can put your shed okay. and put your horse machine in there. Yeah, right. as long as you're not living in it, you know. Yeah. On the buy a building permit for it. So, so that one, we've already taken care of that, that one issue, correct? Okay, yep. Okay. So, should we address the square footage? Sure. What do you think? Anyone got any thoughts? What, what are you thinking? I'm sure I'm thinking uh, you got to think about the wording now, too. Yeah. <laughs> well, I thought. The bottom was 900 square feet. Well, the chalets are the 900 square feet. This casino park is 720 square feet. Taking into account the state requirements, 100 square, 150 square feet per person. How do you determine how many persons it would be? Exactly. And so I'm thinking 500 minimum on a foundation permanently. With sanitation, I would like if there is a per, if there is a requirement from the state on that, I would sure like to see it. One hundred and fifty. So, what are you thinking? Five hundred square feet permanently mounted on the foundation with sanitation. I think that's an arbitrary number. We're just pulling numbers out of the air. No, I'm actually considering a family of four. So I'm giving them six five hundred square feet. So it, no, I'm saying divide that by four. Instead of 600, go down to 500. Even the person that you were asking about over at your place, his place was 620. So that would qualify that without any problem. Right. But it's not the same. We're, we're talking about countywide and various conditions. We're not all living in a developed community like the Dawson. It really crosses the line. We're a land development review board. We have nothing to do with uh, social, social and economic or cultural values. We're not in the business of regulating this. Mm -hmm. um, to just pull a number out of the air like this some kind of culture meeting is not acceptable. It needs to be based on something. 
some of the numbers that you quoted from the state are good starting points to look at those possibilities. There's a lot of that's why I grew my conclusions. The, uh, so let's leave it at that for now and see what the state. sources in here that want to provide educational services but it uh, would be would somewhat be part of the land use but it wouldn't be a mandated land use that they could is it around the park and things like that that we could uh, possibly use that source if they're willing to do it yeah for, for education and can't be the land use uh, the planning commission or the land use office that should be educating all the people. We're not, uh, we're in the regulation business, not the education business. Sorry. But that's where it comes down to. So, so we need to have somebody on the yeah. outside source that would be willing to provide that service on maybe just an additional referral point from the land use. And we could have like little mini, mini sessions that somebody comes in and we spend time figuring out. You know, we did similar with the cannabis industry, but it was like application by application. We learned more every time. And um, I think we're very well educated in the cannabis industry now by way of that process. And we amended, we amended, we amended our rules, including in this round of planning development code updates uh, by the people we were educating through experience. And none of us seem to know entirely about each of these siblings. So we, we do need to bring in outside sources to help us. So in my thoughts of that, I'm fine with outside sources coming in. 
but I don't feel that needs to be a person that has just sat in front of a computer and learned a lot and read a lot there. I think it needs to be someone that has some actual education expertise in it, not just somebody community or off of the street that comes in to do that. I think we can find people like that, people from the industry. Well, from the industry of builders and designers and so forth of that stuff. That's what I'm at. Okay. Most people um, are building in areas. They're just wanting to build a sh like have a shed on their property, and their kid lives there. Um, for us to drive around and see that is a shock. Um, for them to just live in a tub shed and no septic, no water, and so, I mean, it's not just because we're trying to get rid of it. It's that we're, it's hard, and how are we going to regulate to get social services involved? You know, and um, then the other issue is that these people, and there's even, it's just, it's not even uh, people know, but they also have a huge greenhouse. Um, and it's, it's, just, it's just hard for us to see, you know, and I, you can drive. That way, you can drive that way, and you see it everywhere. So it's not, it's the bad apples that are modern <laughs> I'm not opposed to uh, alternative sanitation, but once we approve that, who's going to go out and inspect it? Who's going to go and see every year that it's being maintained properly? And when the property is sold, who's going to educate the new owner? Oh, we just those are other those are other things that I have. We just have to be septic inspectors duties to do that. We don't have septic inspectors. We do. Yeah, we do. We do. Okay. Well, <laughs> but all he inspects is. The installation. That's right. You might need to get the installation. I'm thinking that that is not going to be inclusive enough to do to do the alternative right. at this point. I think we need more education yes. as far as all of these. Right. Okay. So then, as far as figuring square footage and septic. Are we going to let that set for tonight without a decision? I don't think we should let the septic and the sanitation, uh, irregardless of whatever size it's going to be, the sanitation has to be there. No there way. has to be something for sanitation. And the square footage, we just need to determine what authority is it if the state's 150 square foot is the, is the requirement of the states, then. That should be our requirement. But again, how do you determine how many people? Unfortunately, we have from past history, we have people come in and tell you they're going to have one person in the house. You know, or, a year later, there's five. There's that many in there. So we need to set a minimum. Amount. But I mean, well, we have to set every household maintain. I'm just throwing this out. Every household maintains two. Or whatever the census says, there's in Sawatch County, it's an average of 2.4 people per household in Sawatch County. Then that's be that. But again, like I said, it has for the variances. Uh, so if we say 500 feet, 600, we can always ask for the variance saying, I know I'm here all by myself. One thing, we just let their variance be so it's expensive to apply for the variance. No, I didn't say it was. Yeah. It shouldn't be. They're asking for 
variance in our regulations. Some come, come down from the state. I was just going to say, I don't know this last time, last, last meeting or the meeting before, when the gentleman came in and said he was here because getting a sewer or something because he was told he could not go out to the Chico's. That's what we're trying to have done. And so it's, it's a big, it's a little harder doing it. And I mean, it's not sanitary, it's not good for the neighbor, you know, and how many people are going outside in a five gallon bucket next to, I mean, we've had all sorts of complaints. So that's what we're trying to, you know, we're trying to help everyone in that that situation because you know at some point I wonder we can have So what what do you guys want to do with the square footage in the section? Do you want to try to find more information? It kind of looks to me like that's where we're headed. It's on the square footage only. Yes. Okay, the square footage and well, the compost and toilets is a separation. Right. Because that would be part of the sanitation. That's but the sanitation is a must from whatever size the house is. Yes. And that's the first thing that you have to get. Building permit is put the sanitation in for every regardless of the size. So do you feel comfortable, Jeff, if the state says 150 per, and then we say that one over and two, let's put it down that one. Well, I like your folks there based on the assessors. Uh, Averages and uh, whatever we always take our lead from the state right? and we bring it on down to our, our level and amend or add to or accept as presented. And uh, if we're going to do another session, are we going to do another work session? Well, I think we're going to it's on the agenda as well as for our next meeting to take some action. Because the education needs to happen before we do it. Before we come to the state, we're going to have this back to you. Yeah, I'm going to be going about the big meeting. We're taking the parts out. We'll have the parts we submitted. There's other items that uh, we submitted to the commissioners, like that stuff was for the, the kennels and the red what animal refuges and the uh, cannabis. Uh, that stuff was approved. These are the only things on, that come back to us. Yeah, there were a bunch of things that went on and were approved. These were the ones that were kicked out. So the process functions. So then, do we need to say? Yeah, we're going to take all this under advisement and uh, do some more additional homework. If we're not under a time deadline, I would say so. Yeah. 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 You can't, you can't make any motions or anything at this time, anyhow. You just have to have a consensus. Yeah. So if everybody else would be in consensus, I would say, you know, we already have some starting points on the uh, square footage and the accessible buildings. We didn't address the uh, abandonment, but that should be just uh, whatever, whatever the rules, whatever the dictionary defines abandonment is. Yeah, no, I think we just want to start that question. No call for one year. Okay. So then we can't make any more decisions until we have our next meeting. And if you're thinking we're headed for a work session out of our next meeting. So we 
I would say we solicit help on meditation. Reach out to people who know who we should talk to, who we should learn from, and base our next work session on that. Who? Is it the next meeting? Is it the fifth again? If not, then we'll set up another meeting with him when he can. Maybe for a field after that. The meeting is actually two weeks away from that. Yes. And maybe put out a few words to the public. People here tonight, but maybe somewhere around if there is such a thing as a certified person on composting parts. Uh, we have somebody who well, I mean, then that person could come and educate us on them because uh, <coughs> I'm serious on the country inspectors is a good deal. Right, but I just wondered if you would be willing for your work session to let some people present stuff that they gave to you in advance to take a look at the like proposal so that that way you don't even like we could say oh here's some people and then you can decide are these people you want to hear from you actually have to get your system approved by the state and then they would allow us to deal with it yeah but what i was talking about was education so you're talking about your working meeting is it possible to submit a proposal to present some education on these topics for your next work meeting is the question. Um, Did you do that, Marty? Yeah, that's it. Would be a proposal. You'd write it up and we would submit it to the to the office, and then we could, could decide. we could look at it. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think it'll have to be like I said. It'll have to be somebody that's state certified, or you know, that's what. In the development business or building business or something. Right. The state has to have to ensure these things out. People out here want to put in a that type of system. It has to be certified by the state and also pass papers and everything else saying it's certified. And then Mr. Fell would go and tell them, okay, you can install it properly. So, so there's a lot of just Put a, a fifty-five gallon drum up and say that's there. I'm right. So I'm certain papers. So then, what I'm getting is, is there's surely somebody in the state office, health department office, that knows these things, that knows about this. Can you contact them and see if they can show up? Ask them to see if they will show up or if they will do an online presentation or something. And we'll do it that way. Are you is the board in agreement with that? Okay. Anything else? Yes. Thank you. 
Can you make them off it? Yes. Yes, for session. 